Hi scholars, uh, we're going to talk about the distributive property and how it relates to factoring today. Uh, so if we wanted to find the product of 4 times 3 plus 2, it's important to interpret this. This is not the product of three different things, it's a product of two things. One thing is 4, and we're multiplying that by the entire quantity 3 plus 2, and that's why there are these parentheses, right? So this is another thing. These are the two things that we're multiplying. So in order to do this, we want to do 4 times 3, which is 12, and we want to remember to also distribute the 4 to the 2. 4 times 2, which is 8. And our answer is 20, and that's exactly the answer we would get if we had uh, interpreted this problem as 4 times well, 3 plus 2, I can rewrite that as 5, right? 4 times 5 is also 20, indeed, right? Uh, the area model, if you want to think about it this way, is if I have 4 times, so this is a length of 4, I have 4 times, this would be a length of 3, right? And this could be a length of 2, right? 2 feet, 2 inches, whatever we want to say. If I have 4 times 3 plus 2, it's the same thing as if I just separated those two boxes, right? Those two areas, 4 times 3 plus, right, 4 times 2, which is indeed 12 plus 8, right? Which is exactly what we found, 12 plus 8. Okay, now to factor is just doing the reverse, right? It's saying let's start with a sum and let's rewrite it as a product. In fact, what it means to factor is it means to rewrite as a product, right? As a multiplication problem, okay? So the distributive property is multiplying, really, that's really what we're doing. We're distributing, we're multiplying four times this quantity, three plus two, and factoring is going the other direction, right? So for example, in this case, we have 12 plus eight. Well, it's exactly the, si the similar problem we did. We're just gonna reverse it, right? And 12, I know that I can write that as we want to look for a common factor that 12 and 8 share. Well, 12 is 4 times 3, and 8 is, right, we just saw this, 4 times 2, and they have a common factor of 4. So I can actually take that and factor it out, right? So I can actually take this and factor it as 4 times, well, what's left over? 3 plus 2. Okay, that's how we would factor this sum by finding a common factor. Now, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to do it with just numbers, right? The important thing, the reason why it's important is we can do it with algebraic terms, right? So if I want to factor 4x plus 8, I would do it in the identical way. I would say 4x is nothing more than 4 times x, and I'm adding 8, which is nothing more than 4 times 2, right? And again, they share a common factor of 4. I can factor it out. I can pull it out of each of those terms. And what's left over? x plus 2. Right? And that's how you would factor 4x plus 8. In fact, I know that early on you say 3x plus 5x, and everyone says, oh, it's easy, right? 3 apples plus 5 apples is 8 apples, 8x. Really, what you're doing is you're applying this principle, right? You're saying that 3 is nothing more than 3 times x, and 5 is nothing more than 5 times x, and what do they have in common? Well, the x. I can pull out, I can factor out the x, and I'm left with x times what's left over? Well, 3 plus 5, which is exactly, right, 8x, right? 3 plus 5 is 8. That's why 3x plus 5x is 8x because they share a common factor of x. Okay, so the big idea with the distributive property, right, is that whenever we are multiplying uh, one thing, whenever we are multiplying one thing, which is a, by another thing, which is b plus c, we want to make sure that we distribute the a to both sides. So that would be like a, b, a times b plus a times c, right? And the big idea of factoring is this is the reverse of uh, the distributive property, we could say, of distributive property, or we can also say that it undoes multiplication, right? So, for example, right, we saw 
we can say it undoes it like we saw before we said that we have that we could write 4x plus 8 as 4 times x plus 2 right we saw that in the earlier problem okay to go from here to here we're factoring to go back we are using the distributive property, right? We could get back there, so we are multiplying, right? That's what the distributive property is. So one of them undoes what the other one does. They're sort of like inverse operations, inverse ideas. Okay, so let's do a few more quick examples. Let's find the product using the distributive property. Here, I'm gonna need to make sure to distribute the negative four to both of these terms. Negative four times 11, negative 44. Negative four times negative three, right? is positive 12. Negative times a negative is a positive. And we can use a calculator or just reason that the answer is going to be negative 32 here. And we can check it, right? Well, what's 11 minus 3? 11 minus 3 is 8. 4 times uh, negative 4 times 8? Yeah, negative 32. We're good to go. We can also factor this by thinking about what common factor do these two terms share? Well, 28, I can rewrite it as 7 times 4 minus 7x, well, that's just 7 times x. They have a common factor of 7, very easy, right? Let's pull it out, pull it out of each term, right? We factor it out, that's what we're saying, and what's left over? 4 minus x, 4 minus x, and we are done. It's as simple as that.